So PSD2 is seen as the first step towards open banking by most banks. Um, challenges are, I say, manifold. Partly technology, um, because a lot of old environments need to connect together and work in unison. Um, partly it's about understanding the changing environment that regulation like PSC2 brings to banks. Um, some banks are ahead of others, obviously. Um, but from a, from a tech standpoint, most banks are thinking initially about how to comply. And, and we have a really strong value proposition there. So we're working with a bunch of banks across Europe to help them quickly comply with PSC2. The really exciting piece is beyond compliance. Right, so with, by complying with PSC2, what a bank essentially is doing is exposing data, exposing what was considered, you know, fiercely protected customer data sets to the competitors. Um, a few banks are now starting to think about what next. And that's where open banking gets really, really exciting because there's a bunch of TPPs, third parties who are bringing really exciting data-driven propositions to customers, which is not the way conventional banks are used to. The exciting piece is how banks are now beginning to think beyond compliance and begin to look at open banking as a more strategic, long-term uh, way of doing business. Bank, with PSD2, fintechs are going to be a threat to banks. I mean, that was the whole idea. The whole legislation came around to open up this, this closed market, right? Um, the September 14th is just behind us. We're seeing some really, really interesting propositions. And some fintechs are small. Some of them are very well funded. You know, we've seen, there's a lot of talk about threat from the big four, so from an Apple, Facebook, Google, Amazon. We've all seen the first Apple card come out, and that's not really a, a fintech proposition, but it's a big move for someone like an Apple, right? Um, the really exciting product propositions that are competing against the banks are definitely coming from the small, smaller startups, and they've got some really, really exciting products out there. Um, you, from an API, management standpoint, um, Firano technology, um, the Firano as part of our PSC2 accelerator uh, gives banks a ready to, ready to deploy environment for PSC2 compliance and that is built on the Firano API management stack um, and that's quite integral to, to everything about APIs uh, and PSC2 and open banking. I think the last part of your question was about payments. So PSC2 through API is essentially about enabling Partly date account ag aggregation and account information, but more importantly, the long-term value is payment initiation. Right? So absolutely. I mean, from a priority standpoint, uh, open banking is, a, is slowly becoming a priority. I still don't think um, enough banks are looking at open banking as seriously as they should. Uh, I'm, I'm not specifically referring to you know, the big banks in the UK, but across Europe, we're seeing very, very different levels of engagement and maturity and interest in open banking. Um, so open banking is a priority a little bit now, increasingly so over the next probably 12 to 18 months. The other big priority we're seeing is payment. In payments is specifically real-time payments and ISO 20022, which is a big, big change that kind of overlaps very nicely with changes that open banking is bringing to the table. But these, I would say, are absolute top priorities. So I'd say cloud, open banking, Payments and ISO 20022.